You're listening to episode 75, How to Talk to Kids About Death and Dying. Hi everyone, it's Katie here from Child Life On Call. I'm a certified child life specialist and I'm talking with you today in a 12 minute time frame. Uh, how to talk with kids about death and dying. Uh, We don't want families, parents, caregivers to shy away from these conversations with kiddos because it just tends to bring up more questions, more misconceptions. And so today we're giving you quick tools and tangible tips on how to actually talk to kids about these really difficult topics. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Lauren, who was on the podcast in episode 73, and she is a professor of child life and will be giving her expertise on this opinion in our conversation. All right, let's get started. Okay, so we're back with Lauren, aren't we the luckiest? And we're going to be talking, kind of piggybacking off our funeral topic that we have of a quick 12-minute talk. Um, But now we're actually going to be explaining how to talk to kids about death and dying. And so Lauren has lots of experience in this area, and I have some experience in it too. So hopefully together we can help you feel comfortable and empowered to know how to discuss these hard topics with your kids when they come up because they're going to. And I think the more that we turn away from the conversations, the more frightening and ambiguous it gets for kids. So hopefully you'll walk away from this quick conversation about how to talk with kiddos. So Lauren, I'm going to let you take it and kind of give your expertise on the topic. Right. Um, So typically when I have a parent ask me, how am I going to tell, you know, the other kids about this situation? So I have a couple of kind of key points that I like to hit on. Um, The first one, and I feel the one that's almost most challenging, but most beneficial is to use concrete terms. So the euphemisms like in a better place or they're with grandpa now in heaven, um, those can sometimes be really confusing for kids. So I encourage parents to Um, You may even have to practice saying it out loud to yourself, um, but use death, dying, and dead. Um, Again, it's really hard to say when you're talking to a child because we want to protect them. Um, But unfortunately, those can cause a lot of confusion, especially depending on the age of your child. Um, Another thing that I usually point out is that sometimes uh, the younger children will repeat a question. So they'll ask Um, where's brother? Where's brother? When is brother coming back? And it might be really repetitive. Um, And that can be really challenging to answer over and over again. It's hard to answer it even once. Um, So it's just good to kind of be prepared and be on the lookout for it because it can, it's really common. Mm. The other thing that I usually tell parents is that even after the conversation, they may want to go back to playing and that's totally fine. Um, And you may even find that they'll play and then they'll ask you a question And then they'll go back to their playing and then they may ask you another question. So that's them just they're slowly processing and they're processing through something that's familiar to them and comforting to them um, through that play. So those are sort of my top three um, tips or information, you know, to be prepared for when those conversations come up. Oh, I think that's great. And, you know, just even talking about this from a distance on a podcast, death and dying is an emotional topic. And when you're having these raw, honest conversations with your kids, I think it's within us as parents to want to protect them and to show them like, I'm okay, you're going to be okay too. But the truth is when you're talking about death and dying, things are not okay. Things are really sad and really emotional. So as you're talking about this with your child, if you tear up and you cry and you need to take a break, you're modeling that it's okay for them to have that response. So don't feel like you have to be strong, quote unquote, um, and that you can't uh, show emotion in front of your kids. They need to see you do that so that they can do it too. Yes, totally. Um, Another thing that happens a lot is I usually tell parents and families that kids know a lot more than you think they do. Mm. Um, I had several instances where the family thought that they were, you know, hiding something from the sibling, 
But because of all the context clues and the way that a family is, they, they knew that something was going on. Um, mm-hmm. And so sometimes their imaginations are wonderful. That's one thing we love about kids. But sometimes if we don't give them concrete information and answers, then their imagination is going to run wild and may yeah. even be worse in their heads than reality. Um, so typically they know a lot more than you think they do. Yeah, Absolutely. What would you say to a parent who has kids of all different ages, three, eight, and 12? Obviously, they're going to talk to kiddos in different ways, but what if they're all together in the same room? Who should the parent cater the conversation to? I think you would most likely want to cater it to the youngest at the time um, so that they are understanding as best as possible. And three is really young, so that's going to be really challenging for them. Um, But I think talking as a family and coming together with, you know, every family has a different belief in the afterlife. So if you want to incorporate that, include that in your conversation, that's okay too. Um, And I think it's also good to have individual conversations after, you know, sort of a group conversation. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think you want to make sure again, that they just feel open to asking questions and they're all going to respond differently. They're all going to handle grief and cope in a different way. And so again, just reiterating that it's okay to feel or, you know, express any of the feelings that they're feeling and you may feel differently than your sibling and that's okay. Um, So just catering to the youngest at the time, but making sure you set aside some individual time as well so that the eight and the 12 year old have time to answer their more, you know, complex questions that they may have. Yeah, I, I I agree with that completely. And it's kind of going back to that. We are 100% not saying don't include religious or cultural components because that is so, that's so important for so many of us. Um, but we are saying in addition, talk about concrete examples that they can understand too. So when your body is is dead, that means that your heart is not working. It's stopped beating. It means that your brain is not thinking and telling you to breathe. So you can kind of walk through the body systems head to toe and explain concretely what dead actually means. Yes, definitely. Um, And it sounds silly, but even if you've had, say in your family, a fish die or a dog die, that is an experience with death that they already have. And so in some ways it's kind of good because it's something relatable. It's something that they've already experienced in a way. And obviously a fish is going to be different than a person. Um, But that idea that that fish has died and will not be, you know, coming back. And you may have even had a small burial for the fish. So Mm. it's very similar. It's a great learning teaching method (laughs) um, for kids when they're younger, you know, for things that happen later in life. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Lauren. Do you have any ideas or tips or tricks that we didn't get to mention? Um, And I think maybe rounding out a conversation about death, how do you leave a conversation about this hard topic? Yeah, I think you just, again, reiterate that we can keep talking about this if you want to. Um, I'm here for questions. That being said, I also usually recommend having a second person with you. So if it's another family friend or close close person that can sort of be your backup, um, it's really helpful to kind of tag team it with somebody so that you guys are working together. Um, and if you need to step out, you've got someone who's still there to be like, I am still here. We can answer questions mm-hmm. if you want to, or we can take a break and come back. So yeah. um, I just focus on telling parents that they know their kids best and um, have a backup and just let them know that it's okay to feel. Oh, I agree. Totally. That second person can come in really in handy. And and also maybe having a plan um, in place, like at the end of this conversation, can we write a letter to the person that has died? Can we draw a picture for them? Can we all go for a walk as a family? It's kind of like ending with something and you'll be surprised about the conversations that come up organically because you've given them the news, but then you kind of change focus a little bit to a task. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. I, you can, can really get some good conversation started. Yeah. And kids will let you know what they want to know. They mm. really will. So as long as you leave it open like that, I love the idea of having an activity or something that you do as a family to just kind of let things happen organically. That's a, that's a great idea. 
All right, cool. Well, thank you so much, Lauren. And um, I, I'm enjoying these topics so much. So if you are a parent and you have questions about something specific uh, that you would like for us to weigh in on, just let us know and we will be here to answer them. Thanks, Katie. Thank you. Thank you so much to Lauren for joining us again today. Um, I briefly just want to recommend some great resources if you or if someone you know or a family is dealing with death and dying, um, some great resources for kids. Uh, for one, I just want to give a shout out to Wonders and Worries, which is a great organization which helps parents who are facing terminal illness and help them navigate conversations and support their kids. I'd like to mention Child Life Grief Notes if you go look them up on Instagram. She is a great resource full of lots of information. Um, there is the National Alliance for Grieving Children, National Collaborative of Bereavement Programs and Providers, the Dougie Center, the Christie Center, which is C H R I S T I, um, and you know, just a ton of great resources out there. So, want to make sure you leave with something, and we will see you back in two weeks for another 12 minute talk. Thank you for listening to the Child Life on Call podcast. I'm your host, Katie Taylor, and you can follow us at Child Life on Call on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Please rate and review to make it easier for other families to find us. We have cute merch available at www.bonfire.com slash store slash Child Life on Call. And you can listen to more episodes and find resources at childlifepodcast.com.